Welcome back to more Tip the Tally. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today we're going to continue on our series of great performances from 2022. We're up to week 10, and we're going to talk about Jordan Jefferson, a.k.a. Jay Jettas, and his performances versus the Buffalo Bills in 2022. And uh, in this game, he had an outstanding catch, and that's one of the plays we're going to talk about later on in this, this video. But he just went nuts versus the Buffalo Bills. Uh, that catch, that the aforementioned catch, kind of extended the game, and we'll get to it. And just we just want to show how how confident and how charismatic and how close to Devontae Adams he is. Um, has he surpassed Devontae? You could question that. But let's just get into the film and how he just abused and you know you saw the thumbnail how he stepped on the Buffalo Bills in, in, in Week Ten. That's Dane Jackson guarding him, and you'll see Dane Jackson a bunch of times in this video, <laughs> and not good. Snowing early in this game. And watch the release. It's similar to Devontae. He squares him up, gets inside leverage on him. Like, Dane reaches out to try to touch him, and it, it just don't happen. It's that subtle little jump stop. He gets square. Dane Square steps outside with that one little jab step. Dane opens up and can't even, like, he got his hips the wrong way. He got his hips kind of pointed toward the, the bottom sideline, and he can't turn them enough to get his hands back on the inside. And he completely whiffs. And by now, you know, Jefferson's gone. Got the inside leverage. It's crazy. And he looks at the sideline like, what you want me to do? Like, <laughs> where my help at? <laughs> like, what? what? <laughs> and that's crazy. When I saw that, I'm like, "What? What are you doing? <laughs> like, you can't. You're in the NFL, man. You can't. <laughs> that's embarrassing. Just even look at the sideline and do that. But you know, I kind of went on with my next play, and you'll see a theme that's coming. Let's go into the second play. This time he got a uh, Christian Bedford, who's a rookie, who beat out a uh, Kamir Elam for the job early in the year too. And again, with with this play, you just you can't beat timing. The ball's already coming out as he's making his break, so I don't care who it is. If the quarterback and the receiver are on the same page with timing, you you can't beat it. It's impossible. It's impossible. If they if they got great timing, great chemistry, the coverage will not stay there. It's it's almost impossible. Why? Look at this, right? That the ball's coming out. Justin Jefferson is making his break. Uh, Kirk Cousins is throwing the ball. You just, it's, it's impossible. Like, the coverage is not bad. Bedford is right there. But the timing is impeccable. You just, you just can't beat great timing. It's, it's almost, it's good offense is going to be good defense every time. It's it's just a known fact. And, again, I'll bring up, if you watch me on regular Sip the Tally, I always throw the Steph Curry analogy out there. You can play great defense on Steph Curry. Like, he can dribble 19 times. And you can play great defense, keep him out the paint. But then he take three step backs and hit a 75-footer. Your great defense is null and void. So, in the third play. Now, this, here, 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 this is the setup. It's fourth and 18 from the minus 27. From the minus 27. It's fourth and 18. Jefferson's in the slot. Those are the route combos. He's gonna run a he's gonna run a, a corner route. The outside guy who I think is Thielen is gonna run a curl to the sticks. The tight end's gonna like uh, help with the end and gonna run to the flats. And Osborne, who's at the bottom, is gonna run like a, a deep end to the sticks. You see the routes developing. And really they're trying to get to the sticks. And they really got Jordan Jefferson boxed in. It's three defenders potentially could box him in. That corner sticks with stealing at the sticks. And so now it's two versus one. But because of the corner route, that guy in the middle of the field is null and void. So now you got a one-on-one -on -one with the safety and Jordan Jefferson. And keep in mind, it's fourth down. So with it being fourth down, that safety, who's high pointing the ball, which is it's good. But all he needs to do is just knock the ball down. Just knock it away. It's fourth and whatever. You knock the ball away. You get the ball where they started. But he tries to pick it off. He tries to pick it off. And with, instead of just knocking it away and getting the ball at whatever it was, he tries to pick it off 
And Jefferson takes it from him. Takes it from him. Look at that. Took it out of his hands. Right here. He has the pick. Let me back it up some more. Look at that. He has the pick. Has it. Jefferson, he has two hands on it. Jefferson sticks one hand up there. And takes it from him. Takes it from him. Takes it. On fourth and whatever. That's a grown man right there. In his what? Third year in the league? Second? Third year in the league? That's a grown man catch. That's that's this catch was Odellish. Like the Odell catch versus the Cowboys on uh, Thanksgiving. That's that's what type of catch that's what type of catch this is. And then it was fourth down. That's amazing. All he had to do was just knock the ball down. But he chose to try to get a pick and allow Jefferson to get his hands on it. Well, no, not hands. Get a hand on it. And he ended up coming down with it. And that's probably one of the greatest catches I've ever seen with my own two eyes. But let's let's keep it pushing. He's in the slot again. And again, to be a great receiver, you got to be able to work over the middle. You got to be able to work over the middle and take hits. You got to. You got to have that fearlessness. And this is, you know, this is nothing crazy. You just, you got to be able to work the middle and know that you're going to get hit and come down with it. It just ran a little drive concept and the, the slot receiver, you know, he saw, he got an end call from the corner, took the end route. He made the catch with the safety bearing down on him. Like I said, it's nothing spectacular. You just got to have guts to catch the ball over the middle. Dane again. <laughs> Again, I said you was gonna see Dane a lot on here. It's nothing spectacular. And he's just gonna he finna get this work. Look at the release. Got him inside, got him to go outside, got him exactly where you want him. Got him exactly where you want him. Throw a little corner route. Look at the ball skills. Elite ball skills. He has no clue where the ball is. And I'm talking about Dane. No look at him. Look, he look disgusted. He looks totally disgusted. Grown man shouldn't look like that. <laughs> look at this cameraman. <laughs> he looking like what in the world? <laughs> but look at Dane's body language after he catches after just to catch the ball. And I know this is a video on Just Jefferson, <laughs> but Dane just looks totally disgusted. Like what? What am I supposed to do? What? <laughs> well, let's let's close this out. And so we're not gonna call Dane again. Dane's name again. We're just gonna call him Barbecue Chicken. Cause that's what Justin Jefferson doing to him. Barbecue chicken number 30. And he's going to have a hesitation, then a burst. Just throw him a fade ball. Just throw him a fade ball. Again, on Dane Jackson. And now he's looking at the sideline like, why y'all still got me on this dude? Why? Why? <laughs> and then if the, uh, Justin got the ball spinning back there, he looking at the sideline like, why am I still in this game? Take me out. You got me over here on this all pro and I'm barbecue chicken. So Dane Jackson is the reason that Justin Jefferson stepped on the Bills, you know, all game in week 10. And I just want to bring this to you. One, to kind of show you how Justin Jefferson is the complete receiver and potentially one of the best receivers in the NFL. And two, to show you how barbecue chicken actually has two legs and wears a Bills jersey. So I appreciate you guys for coming through. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, uh, share. Probably don't share it with the Bills fans, but definitely share it with the Vikings fans. And um, you know, I appreciate you guys for coming through. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. See y'all later, man. Peace.